let's talk hydrogen and my earth and well you know cosmic ray and particles and that kind of thing because I don't I, I don't think anybody quite got it <sighs> we're just enjoying the oh, I think we're about 10 Celsius finally March the 6th So, you know what keeps you from frying? Hydrogen. Yes. If it wasn't for all that hydrogen around the sun, well, you know, it wouldn't be like it is. But more importantly, that fusion and fission inside would be nuking your fucking ass. You know, furthermore, if it wasn't for all that hydrogen, basically, uh, one atomic hydrogen in the thermal sphere, trapped in basically a plasma field generated partly by Earth's magnetic field its decay, nuclear decay field its thermal field its kinetic field from where gravity mushes Earth and ocean and gases and everything and makes friction and makes Static discharge, all that, making the upper atmosphere plasma, hydrogen plasma field that keeps the majority of the energies out, or, you know, dampens them, absor absorbs them, reflects them, modifies them. And then lower down, you got, you got you know, your oxygen made into ozone. You got below ground all kinds of hydrogen because you have, you know, very energetic, dynamic, magnetic core below. Well, depth down there. Get some depth on it. It'll all come back. They were here for a while. Yeah, the hydrocarbons, the water that you're taking out of the soil, that. You know, there's lots of fissionable matter down there. Thorium, uranium, you know, sometimes in concentrations of fissionable uranium, fissionable plutonium, enough to, you know, if you just like breed it, like how you start up a nuclear reactor or a nuclear bomb, the neutron radiation and starts fusing off neutrons and you got a reaction going and, well, that's part of what's in there is so you're not ready to believe it yet, but there's... It takes two shards of neutronium to do something like that in this small of a gravity well. For this long. So your cosmic energies, your particles, and really fast accelerated split off particles, X-rays and gamma rays, and your cosmic rays of the equation, they penetrate the Earth. And, you know, depending what they go through, depends how much energy they lose off as they're going through, and if they strike something fissionable, you know, like uranium, well, then you start off nuclear reactors, basically. I mean, like in Gabon, Africa. and other places. Take the water out of the ground while well, water is oxygen and hydrogen. So you've removed a bunch of hydrogen. I mean, oxygen slows down high energy particles too, but slows down gamma rays too, but not like helium. You know, carbon is another good one, you, you know. That slows all that shit down. Like lead. You know, same idea. So you've gone taken all that out. And I think it's quite evident 
that you guys realize. Sort of, kind of what you've done. And how you fucked yourself. And I think you know how the space weather is changing. As the, uh, uh, as the old expression goes, the holy comforter is withdrawn. <laughs> hey, would you have known what a magnetosphere was if you were told that? You know, 2,200 years ago, would you? I don't think most of you would have. Probably most of you still don't. <laughs> Even though you're all kind of studying the heliophysics and astrophysics and whatnot. So, you know, that's obviously the insanity behind all the fracking. Well, we'll control where it's going to break as our Earth heats up again and expands. Which is, you know, like baking a cake, right? You get all that out gassing, it expands everything. You get thermal expansion of even non gaseous solid matter. And of course, you get explosive events. You get things hot enough, you start splitting water that's way down below the earth under pressure, you know, like where folds happen. You heat it up and you split a bunch of water off, you know, 100 cubic miles of water to oxygen and hydrogen and then finally you get a little rock movement it makes a spark as it breaks rock apart you know piezoelectric and there you go your, br your big reservoir of brown gas poof pa pooey all the water is superheated to add to the steam at what Six miles a second, 6.6 .6 miles a second. Well, no, more than that, because it's at pressure. Maybe, maybe as much as 20 miles a second, or kilometers a second. Which is just a whole different delta T wave and measuring the final end disturbances, if you want to call it, you know, megatons or gigatons. Or has to send out a pulse through everything whether it's liquid or solid so I think that's why you're going hog nuts on the uh, fracking because you just definitely you, you've clued in enough you realize what's been happening at an undeniable ever increasing rate as far as our interaction in local space are being our astrosphere, our star's hydrogen shell. I think pretty well everyone knows that by now. Because, you know, obviously it's insane. You're, frack, you're gonna frack up your water supply? Holy fuck aquifer, your potable water that you don't even have to filter, all you have to do is bring it up. You have to poison that all off, holy fuck, why would you do that? Why would you assume that liability? In Canada, most of the mineral rights belong to the Queen, as I've explained before. I don't think too many people caught that one either. <laughs> so I'll be a little more plate. Well, just because um, Stephen Harper Drilling Inc. goes uh, tits up, Because of liabilities or whatever, the uh, the damages to that aquifer, that fracking damage, that mining damage that, that stays with the title, it doesn't matter that Stephen Harper dries up and blows away, his remains get carried off with pelicans or something, you know? S Stephen Harper ain't drilling doesn't matter because the land is just like a being it's titled being uh, it's uh, or a titled person almost just like a corporation is and that liability ultimately stays with the, with the title of the land and if you got the mineral rights well it stays with that 
so you can see how he sure as fuck, you know, wouldn't want nobody fucking with what's under you if you have yeah. mineral rights and you had any kind of notions of that <laughs> land being an everlasting thing just like your gene pool. Yeah. Kept in the family asset. You know, and all you have to really do is not fracking off all the hydrogen that's there to cause where it's going to be weakest and break. The, the lithosphere, the crust. You know, that's their solution. We'll just rob out all the hydrocarbons, the natural gas, which is, you know, mostly, again, hydrogen. Uh, that acts as shielding. And you can be sure where there is natural gas, where there is petroleum. There was lots of heat below and there's lots of radioactivity below that made it. And dissolved whatever kind of plants and animals were subducted. That's where that little bit of fossil evidence comes from in the petroleum drill core stems. Well, of course, I mean, pour, pour it on that tree stump over there and uh, petrol, uh, hydrocarbons, you know, it doesn't matter what kind, barsol, bitumen, tar, wait long enough and apply pressure and heat and it'll dissolve it, right? <laughs> dissolve anything organic. Uh, we'll give it enough time and pressure and heat. So, I mean, that's you should be injecting your You should, you should be replenishing that all the time and then pretty soon you're not having hydrocarbons no more but more carbons and gases. You should be injecting your wastewater down there into the aquifer. Not fracking where you are and taking off the gas there. No, you want to be making hydrogen down there. whatever chemicals are around denotes what else you'll get, you know, as far as minerals and minerals that you get to extract out of that superheated water that's splitting and breaking into hydrogen, you know, start getting about 1200 Celsius in pure water and it'll start doing it less with, it'll start splitting off, it'll do it less with, you know, like iron oxide in the water or salt or When you're talking 60,000 PSI, you know. 10 kilometers down that you had to or use an electric arc to drill through. Uh, solar spacey weather is still coming. There's, there's a lot of filaments to let go. So we still got to watch up there. Well, I would say get making the hydrogen and, you know, you drill around your your dangerously hot spots like Yellowstone Caldera. And you don't want those blowing off because that extincts everyone. So you got to cool them. And you take that energy off and you turn it into hydrogen and all kinds of minerals and metals and super hot steam for making your electricity for your power grid. You seem to like that. Eh? where you don't have to worry about anything just you know pay the one monopolized owner uh, anywhere you drill you will hit heat super critical heat like that like I say 2 to 12 kilometers down at the deepest you'll, you'll start hitting them kind of temperatures 12-1500 celsius And then you're filling up a huge, huge reserve of gas that you could draw down in other times. You know, when space, after solar storms, interstellar space weather subsides. You know, like when this 
globula from the local interstellar cloud finishes swapping sides or whatever the fuck it's going to do. Maybe we'll lose it entirely. Hard to say because we really don't have a good up-to-date picture out there, do we? No. In fact, we've barely even got three probes anywhere near far enough. No, we haven't felt what we need to have a good look from far away in the center of the astrosphere where we are. Yeah, I wouldn't want nobody fracking in my aquifer. I mean, my aquifer is already fucked with uranium, but, you know, try uranium off the oxide primarily. But there will be some uranium carballs down there. You know, you can always filter just about anything out. Not everything, but just about everything. Out of water, but fuck man, sure it's prohibitive. And you still gotta deal with that. Whatever you take out. Hey bear. So, uh, you know, the, the queen, all these, these big uh, holdings. They're, they're all, they're all fucked monopolies, man. You know, you have to balance your accountability. And yeah, we got Mr. Otter, or Pack Rat, or maybe we'll get lucky. I'll keep rolling. Yeah, well, I don't know if there's something people don't understand. It's pretty simple. I mean, you just sit there and say, what can I do about it? Or do you get out there and you say, well, this isn't how you're supposed to do this. This is no good. You must stop. You can do this. Here, we'll show you how. You know, instead of investing in some insane nonsense... It's not sustainable, and, you know, invest in a, in a future that's going to meet your energy needs a hundredfold over for thousands and thousands of years. Give you the ability to, you know, you're fusing off hydrogen, you can do like we did a long time ago, and we, Well, we basically impacted holes with meteorites in the ocean floor. <laughs> in the Pacific and in the Atlantic to get some where people weren't living so the, the, the gases coming out of the vents wouldn't be so deadly for them. Which was mainly, you know, hydrogen and oxygen and whatever minerals were in the blowhole. We restored the thermal sphere, basically. You know, and then you got all that oxygen settling out from the splitting of the ocean water, and uh, away go the, the plants and the algae and the aquifer plants, and everything that feeds off of it. That's, I mean, that's basic terraforming in a thawed world like this one. Lots of liquid water. I mean that. It's just basically copying what happens in nature. I'm not saying it was, you know, I was the first one that realized upon it or invented the notion or whatever. I'm sure plenty of other species of terraform that are now in fact a few that have. Including my own. Yes, indeed. You guys can do it. And of course everything you learn in your own planet, eh? Or else you, you go extinct. 
we didn't we didn't have the heads up I've been trying to give you and so other people that are hard into specific sciences to uh, prove the hypothesis <clears throat> that extinctions are real and frequent and you got yours coming I guarantee you even if I can't tell you for certain when it'll overcome you You know, simple dirigible, tethered with graphene piping, 100,000 feet up, pumping hydrogen. And you could do that anywhere. You could do that over a city state if there was a storm. Oh no, we got a storm coming in, quick. Fire it up. No, and you run in your generator for three days and you put your hydrogen straight the fuck up there between you and the sun. As high up as you can get it. Hey guys. And then you keep things from Mount Toba super volcano from blowing up or even the little ones you know like the last time uh, Mount Fuji went up or uh, Maui Maui there or St. Helens Keep in mind that's a bunch of water splitting is generally behind most of those calderas. And below that is thermal nuclear <sighs> circumstances. On top of pushing and shifting and shaping and cupping like like you need to. Like subducting seabed down into the hot. Well, it gets hot enough and all of a sudden the steam starts splitting off hydrogen. In a big fucking pocket, just like your domes, where you find hydrocarbons. You know, and that's basically chem thermosis of probably probably ocean water. Not necessarily; it could have been fresh water too. Plus, whatever minerals were in the ground, and that's your inner energy cycle, and that protects the core from cosmic ray and particle inclusion. It reduces the amount that gets in there. Too much gets in, well it has to heat up more. Expanding and contracting Earth, just like happens as